Yeah. Uh, welcome back, students, uh, to this lecture five on laws of motion. So I hope uh, you have uh, seen those earlier laws, right? Uh, if we just go back to the earlier, or just if I just revise those things back, okay. So uh, we had seen that uh, it all started from the concept of uh, uh, what you call it as. <coughs> from the concept of Isaac Newton, right? Then uh, we had this Newton's first law, uh, which states that every object continues to be in a state of rest or in a state of uniform motion until, until acted upon by an external agency, right? Then we discussed inertia. Inertia is an uh, intrinsic property of an object to be in a state of rest or in a state of uh, uniform motion. Then uh, we discussed few examples like what are the types of inertia? We saw that inertia was of rest, then inertia is of motion, inertia is of direction. Then we took few examples uh, which you would have seen already in the uh, previous videos. Then uh, we discussed Newton's first law is that anything which changes the state of inertia, like an object which is uh, was at rest, if I want to make it move, if an object is in motion, if I want to bring it to rest, or I want to change its state of inertia, like even direction I want to change. If I want to increase the speed, if I want to decrease the speed, then in that case, I always require one external agency and that external uh, that external agency, what we require, that we basically call it as which one? Force. That is how we basically understand the concept of which one? Force. Right? Then uh, we saw that uh, there is one more statement for this uh, inertia that if there is no external force acting on an object, then the acceleration order is zero. This is what uh, you should understand by another meaning of this Newton's first law, which is more technical in nature, that if the, in the absence of net external force, uh, what will happen? Uh, the object will not accelerate. It doesn't mean that it is. It will. Uh, it basically means that it will uh, continue its state of rest or in a state of uniform motion. So as a student, understand this word uniform motion. It's a motion where neither the velocity increases nor the velocity decreases. Okay. So that is what we call it as the uniform motion concept. Okay. Then uh, we discussed uh, what is the concept of momentum. Uh, momentum was what is called as it's the product of mass and basically velocity. That is what we discussed earlier. That momentum is a product of mass and velocity. And then we, we saw examples that what is the ascent of momentum? kg meters per second and then we came to Newton's second law where rate of change of momentum is directly proportional to the applied force. So last then we took up the derivation which was an important derivation derivation that is f equal to m into a that was the derivation which was done by taking the change in momentum and then we came to this final equation that is f equal to m into a. Then uh, we had a discussion about uh, the concept of what is called as impulse. Uh, impulse was uh, basically how much does a force act on a given time. So it is a large force acting on an object for a very short interval of time. And we also saw that impulse is basically change in momentum. Uh, that, that is what, what we saw in the last class. So in today's lecture, uh, we'll go to the Newton's third law. To every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So, if A exerts a force on B and B exerts a force on A, then the both the forces must and should be equal, but they will be in which direction? Basically, in opposite direction. So, uh, let us see example of a spring. Okay. Say, for example, I have a spring and if you just see the connection over here, so in this spring, what I've done, I've taken two springs, okay, and both the springs I've attached, one of the spring is attached to a rigid support and other spring is being pulled from the other end, right? Now, if you see the node, or if you just note down the forces on them, you will see that the force like one of them has a force in this particular direction, other gets ex is the force exerted in which direction? In the opposite direction. And you will see a very important thing that 
both the forces are equal and opposite and one of them uh, will be call it we will call it as which one uh, action force and the other we will call it as which one a uh, reaction force so whenever an object is being pulled okay there is always a action the both the forces like force acting or pulling this will be almost equal to the force which is uh, being pushed there that is both action and reaction will be basically equal in nature and that is what uh, we learn by newton's basically third law that for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction uh, you must uh, like uh, many examples can be quoted over here so uh, this spring action uh, example which we uh, which we are which we are just uh, viewing here uh, it will actually show you that the two values are almost same both the springs will show the same reading right so two springs i have taken uh, they are basically the springs used to measure the weight or mass of an object and you will see that both the springs uh, when you are pulling them together both will have what is called as the same reading so one will be like uh, action and other will be basically a reaction right now in day to day life if you see examples right you can have many examples where action and reaction pair uh, are always there and many things like for example if you just see uh, say a person over here is carrying a certain load right so as he is carrying the load a very interesting thing happen uh, situation you will find over here is that the load is exerting a force downwards and it is basically due to the gravity in if the object would have been in space there wouldn't have any any force because gravity at a point where gravity doesn't act or its value is very very less uh, basically uh, that won't happen so if you understand here one very important thing which later on again we will see that the force uh, like what is weight weight is basically the force acting or the force with which earth pulls us that is basically weight and you know that acceleration due to gravity which is 9.8 when you multiply mass with this 9.8 mg when you multiply mass of an object with weight then you get what is called as the force weight is basically a force with which any object is pulled downwards so this luggage over here it will have some mass so mass is pushing or applying uh, it will exert a downward force on the head of this person and head in turn uh, reacts upwards and that's why this object is stable over here and that's the reason why this person is basically able to like hold it at least i'm not telling he's pushing it okay so uh, as you can see f1 is the force which is acting in which direction downward direction and there is a equal reaction which is acting in upward direction and that's why this object is basically in air okay so uh, this is how you basically understand that even if any object is at rest uh, even in earlier inertia and all uh, if you see the lecture carefully you will see that uh, earlier i have discussed this point that so you have kept an object then always there will be a force acting downwards and we call it as a reaction which is acting in which direction upward direction okay a force acting downwards which is mg an equal reaction which acts upwards so you have kept a book or even if you are standing so whenever even if you are standing what will happen you will see that you are exerting a force downwards which is m into g your mass into g g is acceleration due to gravity and uh, the floor indirectly pushes you up okay so that is what you see over here uh, like always the same, always there will be a action reaction pair we call it as so a force acting downwards a equal force acting upwards then if you see the next example uh, which we will be discussing say a bird is flying over here okay just think over it how does how do you think that newton's third law is being applied in or helping it to fly yeah so if you give a small thought to this a simple flying of a bird you are seeing that the wings over here pushes the wind even it looks that nothing is over here but there is air over here so what are these wings basically doing they are pushing the 
air downwards in turn the air itself pushes the bird in which direction upward direction and that is the reason see the wings are pushing the air in downward direction and the air in turn pushes it in which direction upward direction okay and that's why the push should be almost equal to more than the weight uh, of the okay of that particular bird and that is how a bird basically flies okay so if you can just watch it once again that when the bird is flying it is basically pushing the air in which direction downward direction and the air in turn pushes the bird in which direction upward direction so if you are able to make a device okay you must have seen that nowadays like uh, certain costumes have come where you have that aerodynamic type shapes okay so the reason is that why we cannot fly is because we are not giving uh, able to give that much push to the air push should be more than our weight otherwise we could also have flown in air okay but the net force which the air the reaction i i should be able to give that much i should be able to push the air in that much force that it in turn pushes me upwards with a force which is almost like equal to that uh, we call it as a equivalent weight okay which is required so that is how a bird basically flows uh, that is he, it is able to basically fly right now if you see a next example of this fish over here okay again how do you think that a fish basically is swimming or we swim basically so when you are swimming you will see that uh, you are basically trying to push the water in backward direction and water in turn pushes you in which direction forward direction so here you can see this uh, fish over here it basically pushes in which direction backward direction it pushes the water in backward direction which is the action okay and the reaction to this is that the water in turn pushes it in which direction forward direction it's impossible that you push the water in forward direction and go in forward direction it's never possible you can try no swimmer will push the water in forward direction and go in forward direction if you push the water in forward direction you will go back if you are pushing the water in backward direction you will basically land up going in which direction forward direction right so this is how a phenomenon of the swimming uh, can be considered here okay then so uh, here we have seen three different cases where uh, you have this action reaction pair in the first example uh, what we observed was that uh, the object, the person is carrying a certain load okay and uh, there is a downward force and equal and opposite there is an upward force right then you have this bird which is flying over here so it pushes the air in downward direction and the air in turn pushes the bird in which direction upward direction okay then if i go a bit further right then we saw the example of a fish okay which is basically so, uh, trying to move in water so a fish also what it basically does it will or we when we are swimming we will push the water in which direction backward direction the water in turn pushes us in which direction forward direction so this is how uh, you have uh, examples and these are examples which are very important to understand what exactly is happening otherwise uh, you, we have that theory in mind that always uh, theoretically only we know the things okay so let us say next example here so you try to apply this to a golf ball okay so you hit the golf ball by a uh, by a club we call it as we basically call it as a club okay so let us try to apply this uh, situation of this uh, okay uh, situation where i am i am trying to basically apply this uh, to a golf ball okay so this club it hits the golf ball with a force which is say 8000 newton okay example for calculation purpose okay and whenever this golf ball okay it hits uh, the club when it hits the golf ball okay so here how do we have this action reaction pair so club ball it hits the golf ball, the club of the golf okay the club basically it hits the golf ball with a force of 8000 newton okay it also experiences same force okay so as you can see here okay that when 
द फोर्स एक्सर्टेड बाय द क्लब ऑन द गोल्फ बॉल ओके इज द सेम एज द फोर्स एक्सर्टेड बाय गोल्फ बॉल ऑन द क्लब ओके बट हियर इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग वी शुड अंडरस्टैंड दैट इवन द बोथ द फोर्सेज आर सेम ओके इवन दो फॉर एग्जाम्पल इन बोथ द केसेस यू विल सी दैट द सेम फोर्स एक्ट राइट but why is it that the golf goes goes with a very high speed and this goes with a very less speed okay the reason for that is the reason for that is difference in mass okay if the club and the ball would have had the same mass then it would have been a perfect action reaction pair and both would have moved after collision with the same speed but here uh we'll take a example and we'll take a calculation also where you'll actually understand that even though forces are same but practically one gets more accelerated other gets le less accelerated the reason for them is basically the mass okay mass is the reason why there is a change in what is called as the force between them okay that is what uh, we'll try to understand and a bit of physics here we'll just see that uh, just we discuss this force okay a calculation will tell that when this it hits with a force of 8000 newton say it hits for 0.005 seconds right and this golf ball is just of 46 grams so it creates a rough speed of how much 87 meters per second if you see the calculation there right a force of 8000 newton acting on the golf ball it basically creates that much impulse whereas the club which is over here it comes back with a force of th just 13.33 meters per second 87 meter per second is the speed with which the golf ball will be going whereas the club its speed will be decreasing because it has hit it its speed will be decreasing with a velocity it because it gets a reverse reaction so it will exp, uh, it will what you call it as experience a reverse force or reverse velocity of roughly minus 13.33 meters per second okay so always there will be a action and reaction pair right and one thing which uh, we will actually try to understand here is that even though uh, if the masses would have been same then it would have been the same case that both would have experienced the same acceleration okay so we saw last time that whenever force acts on any object there will be acceleration right now in today's next example we'll take a very important situation which comes in our mind okay and what is that very important situation here the very important situation here is that you have that we uh, that uh, you may ask this question as a student everybody asks this question so that's why i have just shown this calculation to everyone that so as a student uh, we have in our mind the question is that i we say that newton's third law is there okay and why is it that object falls towards earth and earth doesn't fall towards the object okay why is it that so this is a very important question here why is it that earth falls uh, like any object on the earth falls towards it whereas you never see earth falling on the object because both should have the same force as per newton so earlier i was discussing the same thing in this particular lecture here which that even the force is same action reaction but the when you see them actually you will see that their uh, their velocities are different okay so let us see a practical example that any object okay like for example if you see the mouse over here which i am holding okay it on this mouse if i just leave the mouse the mouse will fold down because of it will be attracted towards earth because of gravitational force and the value of this gravitational force comes out to be m into g which is equal to the weight okay so if i know the mass of this mouse and multiplied by 9.8 which is acceleration due to gravity that is the force with which this object is pulled towards earth it also means one more way that earth is also pulled towards this object with the same force now question uh, which as a student you should ask and uh, that question comes in our mind 
that okay both the forces are same then why is it that earth is not being pulled towards the object whereas object is being pulled towards the earth so for that i have taken actual calculations okay and see the calculation here so we'll take a mass of uh, for calculation i uh, will take say for example practically speaking the mass of earth is this value okay if you can just see the mass of earth over here okay the mass of earth is 5.97 into 10 raised to 24 kg you can just see the huge mass of earth okay now so what i'll do now this is the mass of earth it's a heavier mass now let us say you have a person whose mass is just 60 kg now can you give me can you tell me with what force this 6 kg mass is pulled towards earth it is pulled so because earth accelerate or uh, earth uh, what you call it as it exerts an acceleration on the person okay so earth will accelerate the person towards itself with an acceleration that is 9.8 meters per second square that is the acceleration of the earth okay so the person is pulled towards earth with a force given by m into g mass into 9.8 so you have to multiply the person's mass and multiply it with which one 9.8 so here if you see the calculation okay so what we do we do this particular calculation over here okay we start multiplying the mass 60 with 9.8 and we get the answer which is 588 newton okay so mass is not the force when you multiply mass with g you basically get the force which is 588 newton so this is the force with which earth is pulling towards the person okay so a person is being pulled by earth with this force which what is the force here 588 newton so if anybody asks this question to you okay or if I ask you this question, with what force you are being pulled towards earth, then what you do, you see your mass, multiply your mass with 9.8 and whatever value you get, that much Newton is a force with which you are pulled towards earth. Okay. All of you can uh, just find out with what force you are being pulled towards earth. Okay. Now, so this is the uh, force with which basically you are being pulled towards earth. Now let us say what is the acceleration earth experiences. Okay. So earth should be pulled towards you with the same force. Okay. So what I have done. Now this is the important calculation here. So force or the acceleration if I want to calculate of earth. Okay. So I have done a calculation here which very nicely you can just see. What I have done. I have divided 5.88 which was the force with mass of earth force by mass we get acceleration of earth okay and this value when you do the calculation you'll get 98.49 into 10 raised to minus 24 remember this minus 24 how can you find out with what acceleration it earth is coming towards me it is coming with this acceleration what is our acceleration see we are going towards earth with what acceleration 9.8 okay we are going towards earth with an acceleration of 9.8 Whereas earth is coming towards us with an acceleration of 9, 98.49 10 raised to minus 24. Okay. And now if I just see the value, uh, if you, uh, this uh, we will understand more uh, clearly that what is this acceleration, what I'm talking about. Okay. Okay. See this value of this acceleration, right? See earth is being accelerated towards earth with a very very small value 0 0.00022 zeros and 9849 is it possible for anyone of us to even see this such a smallest value of acceleration okay so that is the reason that even though force exerted by earth on us is same as we exert the force on earth but earth doesn't fall on us the reason is that because it experiences an acceleration which is very very small 0.0000000 okay so just uh, see the interesting thing that 
What is weight? Weight is m into g, which is a force exer exerted by the earth on any object and trying to pull it. So earth pulls us with a force which is equal to the weight. Okay, and weight is m into g. So we are also applying the same force. Okay, so earth say on a 60 kg person, the force is 58 newton. That's what we saw. Okay, and then when you can actually calculate with, okay, we are going towards earth with that acceleration. What about earth? Earth is coming towards us with an acceleration which is 0 0.000. It's almost undetectable. Okay, it's almost undetectable and that is how uh, you can, I hope that uh, these values actually by this calculation, I think now you can know that why is earth not being pulled towards an object, whereas object is being pulled by the earth. Okay, I hope I am able to convince this uh, very important point, which any student should answer. So both of them experience the same force, but acceleration, heavier the mass, lesser will be the acceleration lesser the mass more will be the acceleration okay so that is how we basically experience what is called as the acceleration right so with this uh, i'll just conclude today's lecture okay and then maybe in the in the next class we'll again see few more examples okay uh, like an example of say uh, and then we'll understand what is called a law of conservation of momentum. Okay. Like in this example, okay, like when you fire a bullet, okay, the bullet will go in forward direction and you get a recoil of that bullet, which is in basically which direction? Reverse direction. Right. So uh, these are so the few examples, even while walking also, we exert a force in forward direction and we basically go in which direction? Backward direction. Right. So uh, these are the examples uh, which we basically will discuss okay and then we will also see how uh, the next important thing which is called as law of conservation of momentum that will take up in the uh, next lecture okay even in this example as you can see so the the gun doesn't come back with the same force as the bullet goes in the forward direction the reason is because of the heaviness of the gun right so even the force exerted is same, but that is how the things happen, right? So I'll just conclude this lecture today. And then in the next lecture, I will discuss the next important thing. That is law of conservation of momentum. Okay. Thank you, everyone.